Nicolae Ceaușescu, Romanian, Nicola, E. T., E. A., U. S. Q. Listen, 26 January 1918 – 25 December 1989 was a Romanian communist politician. He was the General Secretary of the Romanian Communist Party from 1965 to 1989, and hence the second and last communist leader of Romania. He was also the country's head of state from 1967, serving as president of the State Council, from 1974 concurrently as president of the Republic, until his overthrow in the Romanian Revolution in December 1989, part of a series of anti-communist and anti-Soviet Union uprisings in Eastern Europe that year. Born in 1918 in Scornicesti, Old County, Ceausescu was a member of the Romanian Communist Youth Movement. Ceausescu rose up through the ranks of Gheorghe Gorghio Deja's socialist government and, upon Gheorghe Deja's death in 1965, he succeeded to the leadership of Romania's Communist Party as General Secretary. Upon his rise to power, he eased press censorship and openly condemned the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia in his speech on 21 August 1968, which resulted in a surge in popularity. The resulting period of stability was very brief, however, his government very soon became severely totalitarian, and was considered the most repressive in Eastern Europe of the time. His secret police, the Securitate, was responsible for mass surveillance as well as severe repression and human rights abuses within the country, and he suppressed and controlled the media and press, implementing methods that were among the harshest, most restrictive and brutal in the world. Economic mismanagement due to failed oil ventures during the 1970s led to skyrocketing foreign debts for Romania. In 1982, he exported much of the country's agricultural and industrial production in an effort to repay them. The shortages that followed drastically lowered living standards, leading to heavy rationing of food, water, oil, heat, electricity, medicine, and other necessities. His cult of personality experienced unprecedented elevation, followed by extensive nepotism and the intense deterioration of foreign relations, even with the Soviet Union. As anti-government protesters demonstrated in Timisoara in December 1989, he perceived the demonstrations as a political threat and ordered military forces to open fire on 17 December, causing many deaths and injuries. The revelation that Ceausescu was responsible resulted in a massive spread of rioting and civil unrest across the country. The demonstrations, which reached Bucharest, became known as the Romanian Revolution—the only violent overthrow of a communist government in the turn of the revolutions of 1989. Ceausescu and his wife, Elena, fled the capital in a helicopter, but were captured by the armed forces after the armed forces changed sides. On 25 December, after being tried and convicted of economic sabotage and genocide, they were immediately executed by firing squad, and Ceausescu was succeeded as president by Ion Iliescu, who had played a major part in the revolution. Capital punishment was abolished shortly thereafter. <laughs> Early life and career Ceausescu was born in the small village of Scornicesti, Olt County, on 26 January 1918, being one of the nine children of a poor peasant family, see Ceausescu family. His father, Andruta, owned three hectares acres of agricultural land and a few sheep, and he supplemented his large family's income through tailoring. Nikolai studied at the village school until at the age of 11, when he ran away from his extremely religious, abusive and strict father to Bucharest. He initially lived with his sister, Nikulina Rusescu, and then became an apprentice shoemaker. He worked in the workshop of Alexandru Sandalescu, a shoemaker who was an active member in the then illegal Communist Party. Ceausescu was soon involved in the Communist Party activities becoming a member in early 1932, but as a teenager, he was given only small tasks. He was first arrested in 1933, at the age of 15, for street fighting during a strike and again, in 1934, first for collecting signatures on a petition protesting the trial of railway workers and twice more for other similar activities. By the mid-1930s, he had been in missions in Bucharest, Craiova, Campolung, and Ramniku Valsia, being arrested several times. The profile file from the secret police, Siguranta Stachelui, named him a dangerous communist agitator. And distributor of communist and anti-fascist propaganda materials." For these charges, he was convicted on 6 June 1936 by the Brasov Tribunal to two years in prison, an additional six months for contempt of court, and one year of forced residence in Skornicesti. 
He spent most of his sentence in Doftana prison. While out of jail in 1939, he met Elena Petrescu, whom he married in 1947 and who would play an increasing role in his political life over the years. Soon after being freed, he was arrested again and sentenced for conspiracy against social order. Spending the time during the war in prisons and internment camps, Jalava 1940, Karansibs 1942, Vakaresti 1943, and Targuju 1943. In 1943, he was transferred to Targu Ju internment camp, where he shared a cell with Gheorghe Gorgio Dej, becoming his protege. Enticed with substantial bribes, the camp authorities gave the communist prisoners much freedom in running their cell block, provided they did not attempt to break out of prison. At Targu Ju, Gorgio Dej ran self-criticism sessions, where various party members had to confess before the other party members to misunderstanding the dogma of Marx Engels Lenin Stalin as interpreted by Gorgio Dej. Journalist Edward Baer claimed that Ceausescu's role in these self-criticism sessions was that of the enforcer, the young man allegedly beating those party members who refused to go with or were insufficiently enthusiastic about the self-criticism sessions. These self-criticism sessions not only helped to cement Gorgio Dej's control over the party, but also endeared his protege Ceausescu to him. It was Ceausescu's time at Targu Ju that marked the beginning of his rise to power. After World War II, when Romania was beginning to fall under Soviet influence, Ceausescu served as secretary of the Union of Communist Youth 1944-1945. After the Communists seized power in Romania in 1947, he headed the Ministry of Agriculture, then served as Deputy Minister of the Armed Forces under Gheorghe Gorgio Dej, becoming a Major General. In 1952, Gorgio Dej brought him onto the Central Committee months after the party's Muscovite faction, led by Anna Pocher had been purged. In the late 1940s-early 1950s, the party had been divided into the Home Communists. Headed by Gorgio Dej who remained inside Romania prior to 1944 and the Muscovites, who had gone into exile in the Soviet Union. With the partial exception of Poland, where the Polish October crisis of 1956 brought to power the previously imprisoned home communist, Władysław Gomułka, Romania was the only Eastern European nation where the home communists triumphed over the Muscovites. In the rest of the Soviet bloc, there were a series of purges in this period that led to the home communists being executed or imprisoned. That Stalin decided in favor of the home communists in Romania stemmed largely out of antisemitism as Pocher, the leader of the Muscovites, was Jewish, and thus unacceptable to an increasingly antisemitic Stalin. Like his patron Gorgio Dej, Ceausescu was a home communist who benefited from the fall of the Muscovites. In 1952. In 1954, Ceausescu became a full member of the Politburo and eventually rose to occupy the second highest position in the party hierarchy. Topic. Leadership of Romania When Gorgio Dej died on 19 March 1965, Ceausescu was not the obvious successor despite his closeness to the longtime leader. However, widespread infighting by older and more connected officials made the Politburo turn to Ceausescu as a compromise candidate. He was elected General Secretary on the 22nd of March 1965, three days after Gorgio Dej's death. One of his first acts was to change the name of the party from the Romanian Workers' Party back to the Communist Party of Romania and to declare the country a socialist republic, rather than a people's republic. In 1967, he consolidated his power by becoming president of the state council, making him de jure head of state. His political apparatus sent many thousands of political opponents to prison or psychiatric hospitals. Initially, Ceausescu became a popular figure, both in Romania and in the West, because of his independent foreign policy, which challenged the authority of the Soviet Union. In the 1960s, he eased press censorship and ended Romania's active participation in the Warsaw Pact, but Romania formally remained a member. He refused to take part in the 1968 invasion of Czechoslovakia by Warsaw Pact forces and even actively and openly condemned that action in his 21 August 1968 speech. He traveled to Prague a week before the invasion to offer moral support to his Czechoslovak counterpart, Alexander Dubček. 
Although the Soviet Union largely tolerated Ceausescu's recalcitrance, his seeming independence from Moscow earned Romania a maverick status within the Eastern Bloc. Ceausescu's main aim as leader was to make Romania a world power, and all of his economic, foreign, and demographic policies were meant to achieve Ceausescu's ultimate goal, turning Romania into one of the world's great powers. For the conducator, the leader, as Ceausescu liked to call himself, demography was destiny and countries with rising populations were rising powers. In October 1966, Ceausescu banned abortion and contraception and brought in one of the world's harshest anti-abortion laws, leading to a large spike in the number of Romanian infants abandoned to deplorable conditions in the country's orphanages. During the following years Ceausescu pursued an open policy towards the United States and Western Europe. Romania was the first Warsaw Pact country to recognize West Germany, the first to join the International Monetary Fund, and the first to receive a U.S. president, Richard Nixon. In 1971, Romania became a member of the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Romania and Yugoslavia were also the only Eastern European countries that entered into trade agreements with the European Economic Community before the fall of the Eastern Bloc. A series of official visits to Western countries including the US, France, the United Kingdom, and Spain helped Ceausescu to present himself as a reforming communist, pursuing an independent foreign policy within the Soviet bloc. He also became eager to be seen as an enlightened international statesman, able to mediate in international conflicts, and to gain international respect for Romania. Ceausescu negotiated in international affairs, such as the opening of U.S. relations with China in 1969 and the visit of Egyptian President Anwar Sadat to Israel in 1977. Also Romania was the only country in the world to maintain normal diplomatic relations with both Israel and the PLO. In 1980, Romania participated in the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow with its other Soviet bloc allies, but in 1984 was one of the few communist countries to participate in the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles when most of the Eastern Bloc's nations boycotted this event. The 1966 decree In 1966, Ceausescu, in an attempt to boost the country's population, made abortion illegal and introduced Decree 770 to reverse the low birth rate and fertility rate. Mothers of at least five children would be entitled to significant benefits, while mothers of at least ten children were declared heroin mothers by the Romanian state. Few women ever sought this status. Instead, the average Romanian family during the time had two to three children. See demographics of Romania. The government targeted rising divorce rates and made divorce more difficult. It was decreed that a marriage could be dissolved only in exceptional cases. By the late 1960s, the population began to swell. In turn, a new problem was created by child abandonment, which swelled the orphanage population. See Sigid. Transfusions of untested blood led to Romania accounting for many of Europe's pediatric HIV, AIDS cases at the turn of the 21st century despite having a population that only comprises 3% of Europe's population. <laughs> <laughs> Speech of 21 August 1968 Ceausescu's speech of 21 August 1968 represented the apogee of Ceausescu's rule. It marked the highest point in Ceausescu's popularity, when he openly condemned the Warsaw Pact invasion of Czechoslovakia. <inaudible> <inaudible> July theses Ceausescu visited China, North Korea, Mongolia and North Vietnam in 1971. He took great interest in the idea of total national transformation as embodied in the programs of North Korea's Juche and China's Cultural Revolution. He was also inspired by the personality cults of North Korea's Kim Il-sung and China's Mao Zedong. Journalist Edward Baer claimed that Ceausescu admired both Mao and Kim as leaders who not only totally dominated their nations, but had also used totalitarian methods coupled with generous shots of ultranationalism mixed in with communism in order to transform both China and North Korea into major world powers. Furthermore, that Kim and even more so Mao had broken free of Soviet control were additional sources of admiration for Ceausescu. According to Baer, Elena Ceausescu allegedly bonded with Mao's wife, Zhang Qing. The British journalist wrote that the possibility that what Ceausescu had seen in both China and North Korea were 
vast Potemkin villages for the hoodwinking of gullible foreign guests, was something that never seemed to have crossed his mind. Shortly after returning home, he began to emulate North Korea's system. North Korean books on Juche were translated into Romanian and widely distributed inside the country. On 6 July 1971, he delivered a speech before the Executive Committee of the PCR. This quasi-Maoist speech, which came to be known as the July Theses, contained 17 proposals. Among these were, continuous growth in the leading role of the party, improvement of party education and of mass political action, youth participation on large construction projects as part of their patriotic work, an intensification of political ideological education in schools and universities, as well as in children's, youth and student organizations, and an expansion of political propaganda, orienting radio and television shows to this end, as well as publishing houses, theaters and cinemas, opera, ballet, artists' unions, promoting a militant, revolutionary character in artistic productions. The liberalization of 1965 was condemned and an index of banned books and authors was re-established. The theses heralded the beginning of a mini-cultural revolution in Romania, launching a neo-Stalinist offensive against cultural autonomy, reaffirming an ideological basis for literature that, in theory, the party had hardly abandoned. Although presented in terms of socialist humanism, the theses in fact marked a return to the strict guidelines of socialist realism, and attacks on non-compliant intellectuals. Strict ideological conformity in the humanities and social sciences was demanded. Competence and aesthetics were to be replaced by ideology, professionals were to be replaced by agitators, and culture was once again to become an instrument for political ideological propaganda and hardline measures. In a 1972 speech, Ceausescu stated he wanted a certain blending of party and state activities less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 in the long run we shall witness an ever closer blending of the activities of the party state and other social bodies in practice a number of joint party state organizations were founded such as the council for socialist education and culture which had no precise counterpart in any of the other communist states of eastern europe and the romanian communist party was embedded into the daily life of the nation in a way that it never had been before in 1974, the party program of the Romanian Communist Party announced that structural changes in society were insufficient to create a full socialist consciousness in the people, and that a full socialist consciousness could only come about if the entire population was made aware of socialist values that guided society. The Communist Party was to be the agency that would so enlighten the population and in the words of the British historian Richard Crampton, the party would merge state and society, the individual and the collective, and would promote the ever more organic participation of party members in the entire social life. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> President of the Socialist Republic of Romania. In 1974, Ceausescu converted his post of President of the State Council to a full-fledged executive presidency. He was first elected to this post in 1974, and would be re-elected every five years until 1989. Although Ceausescu had been nominal head of state since 1967, he had merely been first among equals on the state council, deriving his real power coming from his status as party leader. The new post, however, made him the nation's top decision maker both in name and in fact. He was empowered to carry out those functions of the state council that did not require plenums. He also appointed and dismissed the President of the Supreme Court and the Prosecutor General whenever the legislature was not in session. In practice, from 1974 onward Ceausescu frequently ruled by decree. For all intents and purposes, Ceausescu now held all governing power in the nation, virtually all party and state institutions were subordinated to his will. <laughs> Oil embargo, strike and foreign relations Starting with the 1973–74 Arab oil embargo against the West, a period of prolonged high oil prices set in that characterized the rest of the 1970s. Romania as a major oil producer greatly benefited from the high oil prices of the 1970s, which led Ceausescu to embark on an ambitious plan to invest heavily in oil refining plants. 
Ceausescu's plan was to make Romania into Europe's number one oil refiner not only of its oil, but also of oil from Middle Eastern states like Iraq and Iran, and then to sell all of the refined oil at a profit on the Rotterdam spot market. As Romania lacked the money to build the necessary oil refining plants and Ceausescu chose to spend the windfall from the high oil prices on aid to the Third World in an attempt to buy Romania international influence, Ceausescu borrowed heavily from Western banks on the assumption that when the loans came due, the profits from the sales of the refined oil would be more than enough to pay off the loans. A major problem with Ceausescu's oil refining plan which led to Romania taking enormous loans was the low productivity of Romanian workers, which meant that the oil refining plants were finished years behind schedule. The 1977 earthquake which destroyed much of Bucharest also led to delays in the oil plan. By the time the oil refining plants were finished in the early 1980s, a slump in oil prices had set in, leading to major financial problems for Romania. In August 1977, over 30,000 miners went on strike in the Jew River Valley, complaining of low pay and poor working conditions. The Jew Valley miners' strike was the most significant expression of opposition to Ceausescu's rule prior to the late 1980s. The striking miners were inspired by similar strikes along Poland's Baltic coast in December 1970, and just as in Poland in 1970, the striking Romanian miners demanded face-to-face -face negotiations with their nation's leader. When Ceausescu appeared before the miners on the third day of the strike, he was greeted in the words of the British historian Richard Crampton. Once again à la Polonaise, with cries of down with the red bourgeoisie. Hearing reports that his soldiers were reluctant to fire on fellow Romanians led Ceausescu to negotiate a compromise solution to the strike. In the years after the strike, the majority of its leaders died of cancer. After 1989, it was revealed that the Securitate had doctors give the strike leaders five-minute chest X-rays to ensure the development of cancer. He continued to follow an independent policy in foreign relations. For example, in 1984, Romania was one of few communist states notably including the People's Republic of China, and Yugoslavia to take part in the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, despite a Soviet-led boycott. Also, the Socialist Republic of Romania was the first of the Eastern Bloc nations to have official relations with the Western Bloc and the European Community. An agreement including Romania in the community's generalized system of preferences was signed in 1974 and an agreement on industrial products was signed in 1980. On 4 April 1975, Ceausescu visited Japan and met with Emperor Hirohito. In June 1978, Ceausescu made a state visit to the UK where a £200 million licensing agreement was signed between the Romanian government and British Aerospace for the production of more than 80 BAC-111 aircraft. The deal was said at the time to be the biggest between two countries involving a civil aircraft. PESPA defection In 1978, Ion Mihai Pespa, a senior member of the Romanian political police Securitate, state security, defected to the United States. A three-star general, he was the highest-ranking defector from the Eastern Bloc during the Cold War. His defection was a powerful blow against the administration, forcing Ceausescu to overhaul the architecture of the security. Pespa's 1986 book, Red Horizons, Chronicles of a Communist Spy Chief ISBN claims to expose details of Ceausescu's government activities, such as massive spying on American industry and elaborate efforts to rally Western political support. <laughs> <laughs> Foreign debt Ceausescu's political independence from the Soviet Union and his protest against the invasion of Czechoslovakia in 1968 drew the interest of Western powers, whose governments briefly believed that he was an anti-Soviet maverick and hoped to create a schism in the Warsaw Pact by funding him. Ceausescu did not realize that the funding was not always favorable. Ceausescu was able to borrow heavily more than $13 billion from the West to finance economic development programs, but these loans ultimately devastated the country's finances. He also secured a deal for cheap oil from Iran, but that deal fell through after the Shah was overthrown. In an attempt to correct this, Ceausescu decided to repay Romania's foreign debts. He organized a referendum and managed to change the constitution, adding a clause that barred Romania from taking foreign loans in the future. 
According to official results, the referendum yielded a nearly unanimous yes vote. In the 1980s, Ceausescu ordered the export of much of the country's agricultural and industrial production in order to repay its debts. The resulting domestic shortages made the everyday lives of Romanians a fight for survival as food rationing was introduced and heating, gas and electricity blackouts became the rule. During the 1980s, there was a steady decrease in the Romanian population's living standards, especially in the availability and quality of food and general goods in shops. During this time, all regional radio stations were closed, and television was limited to a single channel broadcasting for only two hours a day. The debt was fully paid in the summer of 1989, shortly before Ceausescu was overthrown. However, heavy exports continued until the revolution in December. 1984 failed coup d'état attempt A tentative coup d'état planned in October 1984 failed when the military unit assigned to carry out the plan was sent to harvest maize instead. Revolution and death In November 1989, the 14th Congress of the Romanian Communist Party PCR saw Ceausescu, then aged 71, re-elected for another five years as leader of the PCR. During the Congress, Ceausescu made a speech denouncing the anti-communist revolutions happening throughout the rest of Eastern Europe. The following month, Ceausescu's government itself collapsed after a series of violent events in Timisoara and Bucharest. Timisoara Demonstrations in the city of Timisoara were triggered by the government-sponsored attempt to evict Laszlo Tokes, an ethnic Hungarian pastor, accused by the government of inciting ethnic hatred. Members of his ethnic Hungarian congregation surrounded his apartment in a show of support. Romanian students spontaneously joined the demonstration, which soon lost nearly all connection to its initial cause and became a more general anti-government demonstration. Regular military forces, police and securitate fired on demonstrators on 17 December 1989, killing and injuring men, women and children. On 18 December 1989, Ceausescu departed for a state visit to Iran, leaving the duty of crushing the Timisoara revolt to his subordinates and his wife. Upon his return to Romania on the evening of 20 December, the situation became even more tense, and he gave a televised speech from the TV studio inside the Central Committee building, CC building in which he spoke about the events at Timisoara in terms of an "...interference of foreign forces in Romania's internal affairs," and an "...external aggression on Romania's sovereignty." The country, which had little or no information of the Timisoara events from the national media, learned about the Timisoara revolt from radio stations such as Voice of America and Radio Free Europe, and by word of mouth. On the next day, 21 December, Ceausescu staged a mass meeting in Bucharest. Official media presented it as a «spontaneous movement of support for Ceausescu», emulating the 1968 meeting in which Ceausescu had spoken against the invasion of Czechoslovakia by Warsaw Pact forces. Overthrow Speech on 21 December The mass meeting of 21 December, held in what is now Revolution Square, began like many of Ceausescu's speeches over the years. Ceausescu spoke of the achievements of the socialist revolution and Romanian multilaterally developed socialist society. He also blamed the Timisoara riots on fascist agitators who want to destroy socialism. However, Ceausescu had misjudged the crowd's mood. Roughly eight minutes into his speech, several people began jeering and booing, and others began chanting, Timisoara. He tried to silence them by raising his right hand and calling for the crowd's attention before order was temporarily restored, then proceeded to announce social benefit reforms that included raising the national minimum wage by 200 lei per month to a total of 2,200 per month by 1 January. Images of Ceausescu's facial expression as the crowd began to boo and heckle him were among the most widely broadcast of the collapse of communism in Eastern Europe. Failing to control the crowds, the Ceausescu's finally took cover inside the building that housed the Central Committee of the Romanian Communist Party. 
The rest of the day saw an open revolt of Bucharest's population, which had assembled in University Square and confronted the police and army at barricades. The rioters were no match for the military apparatus concentrated in Bucharest, which cleared the streets by midnight and arrested hundreds of people in the process. Topic. Flight on the 22nd of December By the morning of the 22nd of December, the rebellion had already spread to all major cities across the country. The suspicious death of Vasile Milia, Ceausescu's defense minister, later confirmed as a suicide he tried to incapacitate himself with a flesh wound but a bullet severed his artery, was announced by the media. Immediately thereafter, Ceausescu presided over the CPEX Political Executive Committee meeting and assumed the leadership of the army. Believing that Milia had been murdered, rank and file soldiers switched sides to the revolution almost en masse. The commanders wrote off Ceausescu as a lost cause and made no effort to keep their men loyal to the government. Ceausescu made a last desperate attempt to address the crowd gathered in front of the Central Committee building, but the people in the square began throwing stones and other projectiles at him, forcing him to take refuge in the building once more. One group of protesters forced open the doors of the building, by now left unprotected. They managed to overpower Ceausescu's bodyguards and rushed through his office and onto the balcony. Although they did not know it, they were only a few meters from Ceausescu, who was trapped in an elevator. He, Elena and four others managed to get to the roof and escaped by helicopter, only seconds ahead of a group of demonstrators who had followed them there. The Romanian Communist Party disappeared soon afterward. Unlike its kindred parties in the former Soviet bloc, it has never been revived. During the course of the revolution, the Western press published estimates of the number of people killed by Securitate forces in an attempt to support Ceausescu and quell the rebellion. The count increased rapidly until an estimated 64,000 fatalities were widely reported across front pages. The Hungarian military attaché expressed doubt regarding these figures, pointing out the unfeasible logistics of killing such a large number of people in such a short period of time. After Ceausescu's death, hospitals across the country reported a death toll of fewer than 1,000, and probably much lower than that. Topic. Death Ceausescu and his wife Elena fled the capital with Emil Boba and Menea Menescu and headed, by helicopter, for Ceausescu's Snagov residence, whence they fled again, this time for Targoviste. Near Targoviste they abandoned the helicopter, having been ordered to land by the army, which by that time had restricted flying in Romania's airspace. The Ceausescus were held by the police while the policemen listened to the radio. They were eventually turned over to the army. On Christmas Day, 25 December 1989, in a small room the Ceausescus were tried before a court convened on orders of the National Salvation Front, Romania's provisional government. They faced charges including illegal gathering of wealth and genocide. Ceausescu repeatedly denied the court's authority to try him, and asserted he was still legally president of Romania. At the end of the quick show trial the Ceausescus were found guilty and sentenced to death. A soldier standing guard in the proceedings was ordered to take the Ceausescus out back one by one and shoot them, but the Ceausescus demanded to die together. The soldiers agreed to this and began to tie their hands behind their backs which the Ceausescus protested against but were powerless to prevent. The Ceausescus were executed by a gathering of soldiers, Captain Ionel Boru, Sergeant Major Georgian Octavian and Doran Marian Sirlin, while reportedly hundreds of others also volunteered. The firing squad began shooting as soon as the two were in position against a wall. A TV crew who were to film the execution only managed to catch the end of it as the Ceausescus lay on the ground shrouded by dust kicked up by the bullets striking the wall and ground. Before his sentence was carried out, Nicolae Ceausescu sang, The Internationale, while being led up against the wall. After the shooting, the bodies were covered with canvas. The hasty show trial and the images of the dead Ceausescus were videotaped and the footage promptly released in numerous Western countries two days after the execution. Later that day, it was also shown on Romanian television. The manner in which the trial was conducted was widely criticized inside and outside Romania. However, Ion Iliescu, Romania's provisional president, said in 2009 that the trial was quite shameful, but necessary. 
In order to end the state of near anarchy that had gripped the country in the three days since the Ceausescus fled Bucharest, similarly, Victor Stankulescu, who had been defense minister before going over to the revolution, said in 2009 that the alternative would have been seeing the Ceausescus lynched on the streets of Bucharest. The Ceausescus were the last people to be executed in Romania before the abolition of capital punishment on 7 January 1990. Nicolae and Elena Ceausescu were originally buried in simple graves at Gensia Cemetery in Bucharest, on opposite sides of a path, their graves were often decorated with flowers and symbols of communist rule. In April 2007, their son, Valentin Ceausescu, lost an appeal for an investigation into whether the graves were genuine. Upon his death in 1996, the younger son, NICU, was buried nearby in the same cemetery. According to Journal National, requests were made by the Ceausescu's daughter Zoya and by supporters of their political views to move their remains to mausoleums or to purpose-built churches. These demands were denied by the government. Topic: <laughs> Exhumation and reburial. On the 21st of July 2010, forensic scientists exhumed the bodies to perform DNA tests to prove conclusively that they were indeed the remains of the Ceausescu's. The body believed to be Elena's had decayed too much to allow for a positive identification, but Nikolai was easily identifiable, wearing the bullet-riddled black winter coat he had been wearing when he was killed. DNA was able to conclusively prove his identity. His family organized a funeral service for the couple, and they were reburied together at Gensia, under a modest tombstone. Chauchism Ceausescu's policies While the term Ceausescu became widely used inside Romania, usually as a pejorative, it never achieved status in academia. This can be explained by the largely crude and syncretic character of the dogma. Ceausescu attempted to include his views in mainstream Marxist theory, to which he added his belief in a multilaterally developed socialist society as a necessary stage between the Leninist concepts of socialist and communist societies. A critical view reveals that the main reason for the interval is the disappearance of the state and party structures in communism. A Romanian encyclopedic dictionary entry in 1978 underlines the concept as a new, superior, stage in the socialist development of Romania begun by the 1971–1975 five-year plan, prolonged over several succeeding and projected five-year plans." Ciasism's main trait was a form of Romanian nationalism, one which arguably propelled Ceausescu to power in 1965, and probably accounted for the party leadership under Ion Gheorghe Maurer choosing him over the more orthodox Gheorghe Apostol. Although he had previously been a careful supporter of the official lines, Ceausescu came to embody Romanian society's wish for independence after what many considered years of Soviet directives and purges, during and after the Sovrum fiasco. He carried this nationalist option inside the party, manipulating it against the nominated successor Apostol. This nationalist policy had more timid precedents, for example, Gorgio Dej had overseen the withdrawal of the Red Army in 1958. It had also engineered the publishing of several works that subverted the Russian and Soviet image, such as the final volumes of the official history of Romania, no longer glossing over traditional points of tension with Russia and the Soviet Union even alluding to an unlawful Soviet presence in Bessarabia. In the final years of Gorgio Deja's rule, more problems were openly discussed, with the publication of a collection of Karl Marx's writings that dealt with Romanian topics, showing Marx's previously censored, politically uncomfortable views of Russia. Ceausescu was prepared to take a more decisive step in questioning Soviet policies. In the early years of his rule, he generally relaxed political pressures inside Romanian society, which led to the late 1960s and early 1970s being the most liberal decade in socialist Romania. Gaining the public's confidence, Ceausescu took a clear stand against the 1968 crushing of the Prague Spring by Leonid Brezhnev. After a visit from Charles de Gaulle earlier in the same year, during which the French president gave recognition to the incipient maverick, Ceausescu's public speech in August deeply impressed the population, not only through its themes, but also because, uniquely, it was unscripted. 
He immediately attracted Western sympathies and backing, which lasted well beyond the liberal phase of his rule. At the same time, the period brought forward the threat of armed Soviet invasion. Significantly, many young men inside Romania joined the Patriotic Guards created on the spur of the moment, in order to meet the perceived threat. President Richard Nixon was invited to Bucharest in 1969, which was the first visit of a United States president to a socialist country after the start of the Cold War. Alexander Dubček's version of socialism with a human face was never suited to Romanian communist goals. Ceausescu found himself briefly aligned with Dubček's Czechoslovakia and Josip Broz Tito's Yugoslavia. The latter friendship was to last until Tito's death in 1980, with Ceausescu adapting the Titoist doctrine of «independent socialist development» to suit his own objectives. Romania proclaimed itself a «socialist» in place of «people's» republic to show that it was fulfilling Marxist goals without Moscow's oversight. The system's nationalist traits grew and progressively blended with North Korean Juche and Chinese Maoist ideals. In 1971, the party, which had already been completely purged of internal opposition with the possible exception of Gheorghe Gaston Marin, approved the July Theses, expressing Ceausescu's disdain of Western models as a whole, and the re-evaluation of the recent liberalization as bourgeois. The 1974 11th Party Congress tightened the party's grip on Romanian culture, guiding it towards Ceausescu's nationalist principles. Notably, it demanded that Romanian historians refer to Dacians as having an unorganized state, part of a political continuum that culminated in the Socialist Republic. The government continued its cultural dialogue with ancient forms, with Ceausescu connecting his cult of personality to figures such as Mircea Cel Batran lit. Mircea the Elder, whom he styled Mircea the Great, and Mihai Vitezel Michael the Brave. It also started adding Dacian or Roman versions to the names of cities and towns Drobeda to Ternu Severin, Napoca to Cluj. Although Ceausescu maintained an independent, national communist course, his absolute control over the country, as well as the intensity of the personality cult surrounding him, led many non-Romanian observers to describe his rule as one of the closest things to an old-style Stalinist regime. The last edition of the country study on Romania, for instance, referred to the PCR's Stalinist repression of individual liberties. A new generation of committed supporters on the outside confirmed the administration's character. Ceausescu probably never emphasized that his policies constituted a paradigm for theorists of national Bolshevism such as Jean-François Thuriart, but there was a publicized connection between him and Iosif Constantine Dragan, an iron guardist Romanian-Italian émigré millionaire Dragan was already committed to a Dacian protochronism that largely echoed the official cultural policy. Nicolae Ceausescu had a major influence on modern-day Romanian populist rhetoric. In his final years, he had begun to rehabilitate the image of pro-Nazi dictator Ion Antonescu. Although Antonescu's image was never a fully official myth in Ceausescu's time, today's politicians such as Cornelia Vadim Tudor have coupled the images of the two leaders into their versions of a national pantheon. The conflict with Hungary over the treatment of the Magyar minority in Romania had several unusual aspects, not only was it a vitriolic argument between two officially socialist states, it also marked the moment when Hungary, a state behind the Iron Curtain, appealed to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe for sanctions to be taken against Romania. This meant that the later 1980s were marked by a pronounced anti-Hungarian discourse, which owed more to nationalist tradition than to Marxism, and the ultimate isolation of Romania on the world stage. The strong opposition to Ceausescu on all forms of perestroika and glasnost placed Ceausescu at odds with Mikhail Gorbachev. He was very displeased when other Warsaw Pact countries decided to try their own versions of Gorbachev's reforms. In particular, he was incensed when Poland's leaders opted for a power-sharing arrangement with the Solidarity Trade Union. He even went as far as to call for a Warsaw Pact invasion of Poland—a significant reversal, considering how violently he opposed the invasion of Czechoslovakia 20 years earlier. For his part, Gorbachev made no secret of his distaste for Ceausescu, whom he called the Romanian Führer. At a meeting between the two, Gorbachev upbraided Ceausescu for his inflexible attitude. You are running a dictatorship here. The Soviet leader warned, in November 1989, at the 14th and last Congress of the PCR, Ceausescu condemned the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact and asked for the annulment of its consequences. 
In effect, this amounted to a demand for the return of Bessarabia most of which was then a Soviet republic and since 1991 has been independent Moldova and northern Bukovina, both of which had been occupied by the Soviet Union in 1940 and again at the end of World War II. Non-aligned policy feats Ceausescu's Romania was the only Eastern Bloc country that retained diplomatic relations with Israel and did not sever diplomatic relations after Israel's pre-emptive strike against Egypt at the start of the Six-Day War in 1967. Ceausescu made efforts to act as a mediator between the PLO and Israel. Similarly, Romania was the only Soviet bloc country to attend the 1984 Summer Olympics in Los Angeles, which had been boycotted by the Soviets and the rest of their allies in response to the U.S.-led boycott of the 1980 Summer Olympics in Moscow. Ceausescu's Romania was the only Warsaw Pact country that did not sever diplomatic relations with Chile after Augusto Pinochet's coup. Nicolae Ceausescu was a close ally and personal friend of dictator Mobutu Sese Siko of Zaire. Relations were in fact not just state to state, but party to party between their respective political machineries, the MPR and the PCR. Many believe that Ceausescu's death played a role in influencing Mobutu to democratize Zaire in 1990. Ceausescu reduced the size of the Romanian army by 15%, for which he organized a mock referendum. In line with his policy of keeping a facade of popular democracy. He also ordered large rallies for peace to be held. Topic. Bessarabia In August 1976, Nicolae Ceausescu was the first high-level Romanian visitor to Bessarabia since World War II. In December 1976, at one of his meetings in Bucharest, Ivan Bodiel said that, "...the good relationship was initiated by Ceausescu's visit to Soviet Moldova." The final volumes of the official history of Romania alluded to an unlawful Soviet presence in Bessarabia. Topic: <inaudible> Personality cult and totalitarianism. Ceausescu created a pervasive personality cult, giving himself such titles as conducator, leader, and genial din Carpati, the genius of the Carpathians with inspiration from proletarian culture proletcult. After his election as president of Romania, he even had a king-like scepter made for himself. The most important day of the year during Ceausescu's rule was his birthday, 26 January, a day which saw Romanian media saturated with praise for him. According to historian Victor Sebastian, it was one of the few days of the year when the average Romanian put on a happy face, since appearing miserable on this day was too risky to contemplate. Such excesses prompted painter Salvador Dali to send a congratulatory telegram to the Romanian president, in which he sarcastically congratulated Ceausescu on his introducing the presidential scepter. The Communist Party Daily Sintea published the message, unaware that it was a work of satire. To lessen the chance of further treason after Pespa's defection, Ceausescu also invested his wife Elena and other members of his family with important positions in the government. This led Romanians to joke that Ceausescu was creating socialism in one family. Not surprisingly, Ceausescu was greatly concerned about his public image. For years, nearly all official photographs of him showed him in his late 40s. Romanian state television was under strict orders to portray him in the best possible light. Additionally, producers had to take great care to make sure that Ceausescu's height he was only 1.68 meters, 5 feet 6 in, tall was never emphasized on screen. Consequences for breaking these rules were severe. One producer showed footage of Ceausescu blinking and stuttering, and was banned for three months, as part of a propaganda ploy arranged by the Ceausescus through the consular cultural attaches of Romanian embassies. They managed to receive orders and titles from numerous states and institutions. France granted Nicolae Ceausescu the Legion of Honor. In 1978, he became a Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the Bath (GCB) in the UK, a title of which he was stripped in 1989. Elena Ceausescu was arranged to be elected to membership of a science academy in the USA. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Legacy. 
Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu had three children, Valentin Ceausescu born 1948, a nuclear physicist, Zoya Ceausescu 1949 a mathematician, and Nicu Ceausescu 1951 a physicist. After the death of his parents, Nicu Ceausescu ordered the construction of an Orthodox church, the walls of which are decorated with portraits of his parents, praising the crimes of totalitarian governments and denigrating their victims as forbidden by law in Romania, this includes the Ceausescu era. Dinel Stecu was fined 25,000 lei approximately, United States dollars for praising Ceausescu and displaying his pictures on his private television channel 3TV Oltenia. Nevertheless, according to opinion polls held in 2010, 41% of Romanians would vote for Ceausescu and 63% think that their lives were better before 1989. In 2014, the percentage of those who would vote for Ceausescu reached 46%. <laughs> == Cultural depictions He was played by Konstantin Kojokaru in the 2011 Swiss docudrama, Die Letzten Tage der Ceausescus, a brand new comedy musical. Ceausescu the Musical enjoyed a world premiere at Say 7 and Arts in Leeds on Sunday, 21 May 2017. It is written by Tom Bailey and Greg Jameson, with songs by Alan Stelmach, and it depicts Nikolai and Elena Ceausescu and their son Valentin in a piece of meta-musical theatre that is also a comment upon celebrity culture and the role social media and political correctness play in creating social pariahs. Honours and awards Ceausescu was made a Knight of the Danish Order of the Elephant, but this appointment was revoked on 23 December 1989 by the Queen of Denmark, Margrethe II. Ceausescu was likewise stripped of his honorary GCB Knight Grand Cross of the Most Honourable Order of the Bath status by Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom on the day before his execution. Queen Elizabeth II also returned the insignia of the Romanian order Ceausescu had bestowed upon her. On his 70th birthday in 1988, Ceausescu was decorated with the Karl Marx Orden by then Socialist Unity Party of Germany SED Chief Erich Honecker. Through this, he was honored for his rejection of Mikhail Gorbachev's reforms. Romanian orders, decorations, and medals. All titles and decorations were revoked by the Provisional Government on December 26, 1989. Commemorative Medal of the 5th Anniversary of the Republic of Romania Commemorative Medal of the 35th Anniversary of the Liberation of Romania Hero of Romania, three times 1971, 1978 and 1988. Hero of Socialist Labour Romania 1964 Military Merit Medal Romania Order of the Victory of Socialism accompanied each Hero of Romania Order of Labour Order of Homeland Defense Order of the Star of the Republic of Romania Foreign State Orders, decorations and medal Several foreign decorations were revoked at the time of the collapse of Ceausescu's rule. Argentina Collar of the Order of the Liberator General San Martín 1974, Austria Great Star of Honor for Services to the Republic of Austria 1969, Brazil Order of the Southern Cross 1975, Bulgaria Order of Stara Planina 1983 Cuba Order of Jose Marti 1973 20th anniversary commemorative medal of the assault on the Moncada barracks 1976 Denmark Knight of the Order of the Elephant 1980 subsequently expelled the 23rd of December 1989 France Legion of Honor Germany East Order of Karl Marx German Democratic Republic 1988 for his defense of Marxism by rejecting Gorbachev's reforms Germany West. Special Class of the Grand Cross of the Order of Merit of the Federal Republic of Germany West Germany, 17 May 1971 Greece Athens Gold Medal 1976 Iran Commemorative Medal of the 2500th Anniversary of the Founding of the Persian Empire Empire of Iran, 14 October 1971, Italy Knight Grand Cross decorated with Grand Cordon of the Order of Merit of the Italian Republic the 21st of May 1973 Malaysia Honorary recipient of the Order of the Crown of the Realm 1984 Norway Grand Cross of the Royal Norwegian Order of Saint 
Olaf expelled 1989 Philippines Grand Collar of the Ancient Order of Sicatuna 1975 Portugal Collar of the Order of Saint James of the Sword the 14th of October 1975 Soviet Union all Soviet decorations were revoked in 1990 Jubilee Medal 30 years of victory in the Great Patriotic War 1941 to 1945 1975 Order of Lenin, twice Soviet Union, 1973 and 1988. Order of the October Revolution, 1983, Sweden. Knight of the Royal Order of the Seraphim, the 4th of November 1980, United Kingdom. Knight Grand Cross of the Most Honorable Order of the Bath, 1978, expelled the 24th of December 1989. Foreign non-state decorations gold collar of the Olympic Order, International Olympic Committee, 1984, for decision not to participate in the boycott of the Los Angeles Olympics. Gold medal plate of the International Relations Institute of Rome, an Italian non-profit organization, 1979. Academic title honorary degrees from the University of Bucharest, 1973. Lebanese University, 1974. University of Buenos Aires, 1974. Autonomous University of Yucatan, 1975. University of Nice Sophia Antipolis, 1975. University of the Philippines, 1975. University of Liberia. 1988 and North Korea 1988 Topic Selected published works Report during the joint solemn session of the CC of the Romanian Communist Party, the National Council of the Socialist Unity Front and the Grand National Assembly, marking the 60th anniversary of the creation of a unitary Romanian national state 1978 Major problems of our time, eliminating underdevelopment, bridging gaps between states, building a new international economic order, 1980. The solving of the national question in Romania sociopolitical thought of Romania's president, 1980. Ceausescu, builder of modern Romania and international statesman, 1983. The nation and cohabiting nationalities in the contemporary epic philosophical thought of Romania's president, 1983. The History of the Romanian People in the View of the President Istoria Poporului Roman in Conceptia Precedentului, 1988 Gallery See also References Sources Mike Dictionar Encyclopedic. Small Encyclopedic Dictionary. 1978. Edward Bear, Kiss the Hand You Cannot Bite, ISBN 0 679 40128 8. Dimitru Berlin, Dupa 14 Ani, Soja Louis Ceausescu Se Distenui. After 14 Years, The Double of Ceausescu Confesses. Editora Ergaram. The 31st of July 2003. In Romanian. Juliana Jaron Pilon, The Bloody Flag. Post-Communist Nationalism in Eastern Europe. Spotlight on Romania, ISBN 1-56000-062-7, ISBN 1-56000-620-X. Gheorghe E. Nicolae Ceausescu. In, KCS, Write J. E. D. S. Mental Maps in the Era of Détente and the End of the Cold War 1968-91. Palgrave Macmillan, London Marion Opera, O Trecut 15 Ani, Conspiratia Securitatie 15 years later, The Securitate Conspiracy, in Lumia Magazine NR 10, 2004, in Romanian, link leads to table of contents, verifying that the article exists, but the article itself is not online. Vioral Patrici, EUM Faust Soja Louis Nicolae Ceausescu I was Ceausescu's double, Lumia Magazine NR 12, 2001 in Romanian Stevens W. Swords, 25 Lectures on Modern Balkan History The Balkans in the Age of Nationalism, 1996, in particular Lecture 24, The Failure of Balkan Communism and the Causes of the Revolutions of 1989 Victor Stankulescu, Nu va fi mila, o tu milliard de lei in Kant do not have mercy, they hold two billion 
delay $33 million in their account s. in Journal National, the 22nd of November 2004 John Sweeney, The Life and Evil Times of Nikolai Ceausescu, ISBN 0-09-174672-8 Stelian Tenez, Societatia Civila Romaneasca C. Violenta Romanian Civil Society and Violence, in Agora, Issue 3, IV, July to September 1991 Philip Teodorescu, et al., Extracts from the Minutes of a Romanian Senate Hearing, 14 December 1994, featuring the remarks of Philip Teodorescu. Cataline Gruya, Viata Lui Nicolae Ceausescu, in National Geographic Romania, November 2007, pp. 41-65 Denis Deleton Ceausescu and the Securitate, Coercion and Dissent in Romania, 1965-1989, ISBN 978-1563246333 Pub. M. E. Sharp. P. 351 Pinstripes and Reds, An American Ambassador Caught Between the State Department and the Romanian Communists, 1981-1985 Washington, D.C., Selu Foundation Press, 1987. ISBN 0-944273-01-7 External links Nicolae Ceausescu at Encyclopædia Britannica Ceausescu, Nicolae, Romania under Communism Nicolae Ceausescu's last speech in public Ceausescu's trial transcripts in English Ceausescu's trial transcripts in Romanian Romania's demographic policy The Politicians and the Revolution of 1989 in Romanian Gheorghe Bratescu, Clipa 638, Un complot ratat A failed scheme. On how Milia died, probably killed by Stancolescu according to this writer, and the life of the Ceausescu family, in Romanian Death of the Father, Nicolae Ceausescu focuses on his death, but also discusses other matters. Many photos. Killer file entry on Nicolae Andru de Ceausescu chronological overview of important events in his life and rule. Video on YouTube, video of the trial and execution of Nicolae and Elena Ceausescu. The Genocide of the Souls. The Pitesti Experiment